I believe in family. That's where I got my fundamentals. That's where I learned uh, a great deal about um, what loyalty means, what family means, what commitment and hard work. And I wouldn't trade that for all the money in the world. Family, a sacred bond, a responsibility, a commitment. For Jerry Colangelo, taking care of family has always been of the utmost importance. But when Jerry thinks of family, he thinks about more individuals than just those related through bloodlines. He defines family as friends, employees, and fortunately for all of us, as fellow Arizonans. You see, for Jerry, we are all part of his family, a family he has always been proud of and has always wanted more for. Back in 1968, I, I had no idea what uh, might lie ahead for for me and my family. And as the years have passed, uh, we know we, we have been blessed with uh, uh, wonderful friends, wonderful opportunities here. And from day one, I've, I've been very cognizant of uh, that opportunity and believed in putting back into the community, trying to make this community a better place in which to live. This is our adopted home and has been uh, for the better part of 30 plus years. Uh, so we're very fortunate to have uh, been granted that opportunity back then uh, to come to Arizona. He was born Gerald John Colangelo in 1939. His lifelong journey to the top began humbly in a working class Chicago suburb known as Chicago Heights. I feel very blessed that I was uh, born into uh, a working class family. Uh, it was uh, very much an Italian um, neighborhood in a suburb of Chicago. Uh, people didn't have much, but people took care of one another. Whatever we had, we all shared with one another. So we didn't realize we didn't have anything. We thought we were doing quite well. Um, the only home I ever lived in as a youngster was the home my grandfather built out of the remnants of two railroad boxcars and some extra lumber. And, uh, and yet, that was home. Jerry didn't spend his days as a child studying. He spent his time playing sports, where he excelled in both basketball and baseball, receiving 66 college basketball scholarship offers and numerous offers to pitch professionally. But an event his senior year in high school put an end to his dream of being a major league pitcher. My competitive juices uh, forced me, as I say it, to pitch five games in one week, and by the end of the week, that arm wasn't quite the same anymore, and that was more or less the end of the pitching career. Uh, but I got an education, first one in my family to get a college education. As an all Big Ten basketball player, Jerry graduated from the University of Illinois in 1962 with a degree in physical education. He and his wife, Joan, whom he had married in 1961, decided to move back to Chicago where Jerry dabbled in a couple of clothing businesses. But then one day in 1966, Jerry's destiny finally found him. And then I met this individual, Dick Klein, who had a dream. He had a dream of getting an NBA franchise in the city of Chicago. Uh, so I went to work for him selling uh, uh, incentive, uh, uh, program, incentive merchandising programs. and. Uh, uh, six months later, we had the NBA uh, franchise and we named them the Chicago Bulls. By 1968, the NBA was ready to expand out west, and the owners of the soon-to-be Phoenix Suns wanted to make Jerry, at age 28, the youngest general manager in all professional sports. Well, I came here uh, to, uh, for an interview in February, late February of 1968, it was 20 below zero when I left uh, O'Hare, and when I landed at Terminal 1, uh, it was about 70 degrees, and there were a few palm trees, and I was impressed right off the bat. Uh, by the end of that day, I was pretty much uh, certain that we were coming back, and this was going to be home for my young family. Everyone loves a winner, and uh, we made the playoffs our second year in the, in the uh, league, and I actually coached that team the second half of that year. And, uh, we played in the finals just six years later, uh, in 1975-76 against the Boston Celtics. It won't start until it's clutch, they'll have to throw it up. Go ahead, turn around, shot in the air, it's good! Game uh, 
uh, game in Boston was considered maybe the greatest game of all time. Uh, that's, that's certainly a memory that I'll never forget. But that particular series, that year, that team brought the community together. Phoenix is a melting pot. This valley brings people together from all over the country. But for that time and place, it galvanized the community and people, for the most part, were all Suns fans. After nearly 20 successful years in the Valley, the Suns just about set in 1987. A drug scandal that allegedly involved some Suns players nearly brought down the franchise. The community was disheartened and the owners wanted out. We went through a, a difficult time in the early 80s with some, um, some teams that uh, did not play up to par. and We had some questionable uh, individuals and of course uh, that led to the opportunity to buy the franchise in 1987 and uh, uh, it led me to believe uh, and more or less prophesize that out of adversity comes opportunity and that's exactly what took place. The deal nearly didn't happen however. Wall Street's Black Monday was unknowingly looming and a few key investors had pulled out. I had about six weeks in terms of a timetable to, uh, to put the transaction together. Uh, I had some individuals and some corporate uh, uh, partners that were lined up. Uh, at the very last minute, two of those corporate partners fell out. Um, that particular evening, uh, on a Thursday night, my, uh, my attorney uh, felt sorry for me and said basically, nice try, great effort, you fell short. And I just wouldn't accept it that, uh, that easily. Uh, without any sleep that night, uh, came up with an idea, uh, spoke to the uh, sellers, uh, put together a creative way of dealing with the shortfall that I had, uh, and we closed the transaction. Uh, Black Monday on the stock market meant that uh, those who were contemplating investing with me probably would not have invested uh, with that occurrence taking place on Monday. So time means everything in life, and Fortunately, in that deal, my timing was good. Through a series of blockbuster trades and acquisitions, Jerry quickly turned around the Suns, both on and off the court. Next, he turned his attention to building the Suns a new home, one that would secure their future here in the Valley and provide a renaissance for downtown Phoenix. The city was growing. Uh, the Phoenix Suns needed uh, uh, a new facility, and we announced that we were going to go out and build a new uh, arena. Uh, downtown was uh, kind of a wasteland. Uh, it was a place you wouldn't want to send your kids. Uh, people who worked downtown uh, were anxious to uh, leave their offices uh, with some security, get in their cars, and, and leave for uh, somewhere else. America West Arena opened in 1992, and downtown Phoenix became the place to be. New businesses were opening everywhere, and the Suns were enjoying their best year ever. The 1992-93 season was, uh, was a fabulous year. Um, we had a new coach, we had some new players, we had a big trade, one of the NBA's uh, flashiest players in Charles Barkley, a new arena, uh, a lot of things happening in downtown, and all the stars were aligned, so to speak. Uh, got to the finals, um, were beaten in six games, uh, Big disappointment as far as I'm concerned because uh, I don't want to say it was all for naught, but it was the one thing that I have yet to accomplish and that is win that NBA championship. And in my heart of hearts, I thought that was the year. Right after the Suns and Bulls championship series, Jerry was approached by some local residents who felt that Arizona was ready for Major League Baseball. Furthermore, they felt Jerry was just the man to bring it. I immediately put up my hands and said, no, you have the wrong person. Uh, my plate's full, I'm just too busy with everything else. Um, after some due diligence on my own part, after speaking with people within the industry, uh, I weighed the pros and cons, the pluses and minuses, and made the decision to go ahead and make it happen. Uh, and the bottom line was, I felt it would add such a, a major addition to the quality of life for not only the people living here today, but for future generations. To help snowball the synergy that was already taking place, it was decided to build Bank One Ballpark in downtown Phoenix. Five years of planning and hard work paid off 
when in 1998, the Arizona Diamondbacks took to the field. Opening night was a, was a, was a great night. The anticipation of opening up uh, uh, the ballpark and our first major league game, et cetera, and uh, it was a very festive uh, event. We actually selected a couple of young kids uh, sitting in the upper deck uh, to throw out the first ball uh, uh, on that first game. And I escorted the two out to the mound and uh, they were the ones who uh, were able to, to take, the, uh, take that moment and cherish it. And it was a, it was a fabulous night, it was a fabulous moment and uh, uh, something I'll never forget. The Diamondbacks were an immediate hit. In only their second year, they won the National League West. Besides the Suns and the Diamondbacks, Jerry has brought arena football and the WNBA to Phoenix. He also played a vital role in bringing the NHL to the Valley, making Phoenix one of the few select markets to have the big four, football, basketball, baseball, and hockey. There's a place for sports and entertainment in our, in our society. Uh, people need outlets, people need to be entertained, and uh, professional sports and even amateur sports are ways of doing that as spectators. The teams Jerry has given the state have brought our communities together, made us one. For years, we have gathered in front of TVs and radios as a unified whole to cheer them on. They've become part of our identity, and in turn, part of our family. The state is a better place to live because of them and because of the man behind them. Jerry has always been an example for us all, whether it be through Phoenix Suns or Diamondback Charities or by the way he's always run his organization as a family. You know, th there's so much said about people who uh, kind of believe in hard work and uh, luck and timing. Uh, and there was a time in my life when I would have fallen into that trap myself, but. Uh, there was a time when I came to understand that uh, uh, regardless of how much work I put into it, God had a plan for my life. And I think his plan was to put me and my family here in Arizona. That's what I truly believe. Um, I know too many people who are smarter, who can do a job better than I can. Um, and I sit back and wonder, why not them? Why me? Uh, well, it wasn't my plan. It was his plan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome history maker Jerry Colangelo.